organisation we chose for the study was the electrical company Dinergy Inc. Dinergy Inc. owned and operated a number of power stations throughout the US and was the parent company to four subsidiaries. We chose this organisation as we believe it's the perfect example of corporate failure. Basically, back in late 2011, this organisation had structured itself so the parent company, Dinergy Inc., was carrying very little debt, while one of its four subsidiaries, Dinergy Holdings, was carrying nearly most of that debt. They did this by transferring valuable assets from the subsidiary, Dinergy Holdings, to the parent, Dinergy Inc., which left the subsidiary filing for a Chapter 11 bankruptcy. This type of bankruptcy is used to give organisations time to restructure their debts and assets to give them a fresh start. From this manoeuvre by Dinergy, it caused a massive outcry from the bondholders, claiming that Dinergy illegally shifted the right to certain assets to the shareholders, which forced the bondholders to sue the company. Dinergy stock was also delisted from the New York Stock Exchange the next day after the bankruptcy. Also, Dinergy posted a second quarter 2012 loss of $1.6 billion. And so who is to blame in this situation? It would be the board of directors of Dinergy. The unethical and possibly fraudulent behaviour conducted by Dinergy did appear to have some warning signs that led to the company's bankruptcy in 2012. One of the most apparent signs that would make us expect this type of behaviour was the fact that similar occurrences have happened to the company in the past. Back in 2002, Dynergy came close to having to file for bankruptcy but sold assets in order to prevent this occurring. It was at this same time that Dynergy was being charged for allegedly conducting accounting fraud. Since instances like this have occurred in the past, this should provide a warning that similar instances may occur in the future. The warning signs presented before the 2012 bankruptcy occurred were that Dynergy had a high level of debt that was continued to grow and revenue had dropped drastically from $2.32 billion in 2010 to $1.59 billion in 2011. Dynergy's share price also decreased and analysts forecast did not show that investing in the company was a good idea. This shows the company was desperate at the point in time that they decided to transfer debt to one of their subsidiaries, which ultimately led to further complications. So some of the lessons learned from Dynergy's situation is that behaviour that is unethical, like transferring debt to a subsidiary company to avoid having to pay creditors, and increasing value to shareholders is not a good way of doing business in the long run. This is because in the end, Dynergy Inc. was forced to file bankruptcy itself, although it did not affect all of its subsidiaries. To prevent situations like this, it is essential that Dynergy learns to not let their debt increase to amounts so high that they are unable to manage it. Changing the company structure as well as restructuring debts right before filing for bankruptcy was a very risky move and was even considered fraudulent by an independent examiner hired by the court to investigate Dynergy. This shows that it's not something that should be repeated in the future, but it can be learned from. Also, the fact that Dynergy's management team resigned around this time created issues regarding the culture, which Dynergy should learn to avoid. Usually, when a firm declares bankruptcy, shareholders are typically wiped out with creditors seizing control. However, Dynergy announced a more unorthodox kind of bankruptcy. Its bondholders and other lenders are likely to take a 10% Haircut while shareholders, including Carl Inc., a Maverick billionaire, will return full control of the company. This infuriated the public and the shareholders, with the media having a field day. The bondholders appointed a bankruptcy examiner to investigate the alleged transfer of millions of dollars in assets to Dillinger's parent company approximately two months prior to the bankruptcy filing. The bondholders who agreed to a proposed restructuring prior to the bankruptcy alleged that the transfer were part of a secretive and closed process undertaken with no notice to Dinergy's creditors. The stakeholders in the public felt misled and lied to with the intention to take their money away. The media reported that Dinergy made a promise and now is walking away from its debts, forcing others to bear the cost with other outlets calling Dinergy a loser whom all winners must subsidise. Dinergy should not be able to use bankruptcy to stiff its creditors. It should take personal responsibility for taking on more debts than it can handle. Dinergy's entire strategy is made up from many smaller parts. When restructuring itself so that Dynergy Incorporated, the parent company, was left with very little debt and Dynergy Holdings, one of the subsidiaries, held almost all of it, Dynergy Holdings guaranteed the debt to Dynergy Incorporated's three operating divisions. 
these divisions were restructured so that they would be less affected by holdings declaring bankruptcy. The restructuring also required holdings to change from a corporation to a limited liability company, as the Supreme Court ruling means that in a limited liability company, it is more difficult for creditors to sue the directors for a breach of fiduciary duties. Now, any of these smaller parts taken by themselves could be viewed as Dynergy utilizing earnings management in an attempt to help the company as a whole. However, when viewed all together, Dynergy's actions display a remarkable lack of corporate social responsibility, as their actions were designed to avoid paying the unsecured creditors as much as possible. Additionally, Dynergy's actions disregard the well-being of many of their Dynergy Holdings employees, whose jobs were put in jeopardy, as is to be expected when a company files for bankruptcy. Dynergy's actions exceeded the limits of what could be considered legal earnings management and into the realms of fraud. As concluded by an examiner regarding the purchase of Colco, one of the operating divisions I previously mentioned. When you consider this behavior combined with Dynergy's failings since 2002, there are strong indicators that a lack of appropriate corporate governance, or at least management failing to uphold it, um, what corporate governance there is. While Dynergy has attempted to act within legal bounds by removing a lien to preserve the core company, they have exhibited little beneficial behaviour for stakeholders other than parent company shareholders. Reorganising the structure aimed to protect these shareholders to the detriment of bondholders. Contrasting with institutional norms whereby creditors are usually paid first during bankruptcy, these actions are determined by other means, including how Dynergy has evaluated stakeholder influence. There are prevalent agency relationships within this scandal, being the owner-manager contract with shareholders and that with the lenders. In the course of Dynergy's corporate restructure, the shareholders had taken priority in management's actions. The lender relationship, however, was partially compromised. The bondholders began to receive reduced claim on their company's assets and increasing layers of debt on their holdings, spurring negative legal action. The secured creditors had an enforced 1.6 interest coverage ratio covenant and Dynergy maintained this debt contract by restructuring to comply. While the 2012 annual report is seemingly transparent about the business failure, it is entirely unmasked with pages of pure black and white, perhaps intentionally unappealing to the eye of investors. Dynergy's new policy and strategy aims to establish a strong perceived foundation post-bankruptcy for future profitability. This includes an employee-driven program to lower costs and improve safety in internal processes. There is a further stretch for legitimacy where they focus on emission reduction technology in coal facilities as a key climate change initiative and a carbon offset reforestation project. From a distance, there is a perception of change in environmental considerations, but between the lines, there does not actually appear to be any significant recent changes. Shortly before the parent company's bankruptcy filing in July 2012, Dynergy Inc. agreed to pay 99% of stock to creditors once its bankruptcy proceedings had finished and 1% to shareholders with warrants allowing them to increase this to up to 13.5% over five years. The direct consequence of this agreement and the 2012 bankruptcy was the merging of Dynergy Holdings into Dynergy Inc., with Dynergy Inc. being the surviving company. In addition to this, the New York Stock Exchange delisted and suspended trading for the company due to uncertainty on the duration of the bankruptcy process and how this may affect shareholders. Furthermore, two of the company's energy plants were sold to slowly pay creditors. The merge between Dynergy Inc. and Dynergy Holdings following the 2012 bankruptcy somewhat restored the company's relationship with creditors who were overlooked during the November 2011 filing, which led to the transfer of assets from Dynergy Holdings to the parent company. Therefore, it can be said that the 2012 proceedings promoted the conventional idea, which the company had not adopted prior to the filing, of putting creditors before shareholders during bankruptcy. Thank you.